This is a Pinball News production. Thank you all very much. Welcome to the uh, uh, Jonathan and Martin show. Uh, you guys have been too much together. I really appreciate being here. I am shocked at, at, the, at the, what a great show this is. Uh, I didn't know for in the last for the last decade if there was such a show like this. This is really good to see the community out, everybody coming to this show, all the different manufacturers here showing their stuff, and so it's really very exciting. I said again, I didn't really expect it. Uh, I was in Europe and said, "Oh, I'll cover," and I came over here, and I ah, just God, I'm so glad I'm here. So I, we appreciate all of you. Um, um, some of you were just in. Uh, in Chicago, in my area. How many of you went to uh, Pinball Expo? Okay, a few of you, so some of you do it. They may be a little bored. Yeah, some, a lot of you may be a little bored with what I have to say, but some of you may be a little bored uh, because I'll repeat some stuff. Um, those of you who were, did you guys hear us, uh, Seth and I speak at Pinball Expo? Yeah, okay, so we got one, one that's a total repeat. How many of you that were there, did you tour our factory? Yeah. No. It is, it is impressive. I am impressed. I am very impressed with it. Um, so, um, glad to have the chance to tell some of you about it, show a few things to you all. Um, this thing is built as a 40 years of pinball. I think that's what they called it in, in Chicago. Yeah, we took it from that. Yeah, 40 years of pinball. I'm not sure if we should talk about the 40 past years or the next 40 years because I'm more excited about the future of pinball than I've ever been before about pinball. I mean, where we're going, what you're seeing, what we're doing, what other people are doing, very exciting. And we got a, it's, it, we got a lot, a long way to go. And we, as we join the modern, modern world, but we'll talk some about the past. Um, the past 40 years, or the past 77 years, actually, because I'm 79 and my father started as a pinball manufacturer when I was two. He, uh, my father started at Sam, that's Sam there, that's Sam, and uh, Sam, and Sam Stern, I think that's me. <laughs> it's, it's either me or my brother David, but it's actually me. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, oh, you're gonna. This is great. So, no, nah, I'll, I'll hang here. I got some notes. Um, my father started as a game operator. Somebody who puts games in, in uh, bars and, and uh, drugstores and what have you in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the east and the east of the United States, and that's where I was born. Um, he be, that was in the 30s late 30s and he became thereafter he became a game distributor somebody who buys games from the manufacturer and sells them to other game operators he became a game distributor so that he could gain games sooner and uh at a better price so any of it um in uh 1947 when i was two and he was a 35 year old punk kid he came to chicago to see his supplier, Harry Williams, who was probably a 39-year-old punk kid. You notice they're all very dressy. That was the way of the time. Uh, so this is, that's Harry there. That's Harry, is one of his wives and daughter. Harry had three wives. This was, you know, he had three, not at the same time. But, but no wait, this gets, this gets weirder. He had three wives, and I tend to digress when I do these things. He had three wives, two of them passed away on the same day. I don't mean the same date. They passed away on the same day. It's very bizarre, but uh, okay. That's uh, interesting, but I don't know what story. Uh, in any event, um, so this was some of the people of the days, and as I said, they dressed a little more formally than we do today. You want to click it for me? Let's see what I got next. So this, we're going to talk Harry Williams for a while. This was Harry's airplane. So when my father, he had a uh, Bonanza single engine plane. When my father uh, came to Chicago in 1930s, uh, 1947 to see him, Sam, Sam sat behind Harry's desk and he put his feet up on Harry's desk and he said, why don't you sell me the company? Harry said, well, I'll have to think about that. Went up in his airplane, 
flew, flew around Chicago for three hours, came down, sold my father half of Williams. So from the time I was uh, two, we were pinball manufacturers. Uh, this is uh, Harry's boat in uh, California, not, not Chicago. Mine's in Chicago, mine's not like that. Uh, but any event, and this at Williams, you notice the stars on the floor. Uh, this was the executive dining room, also called the Starlight Room. That's where they had lunch. Little bit of a different world than today. Let's let's uh, move on. Do another one here. What what do I got next? Okay, so that's Harry Williams. That's Sam Stern, Gary Stern, Gary Stern, Sam Stern. Classic picture of Sam Stern. Absolutely classic. Sam. Sam was. Uh, he was Mr. Pinball. He knew. He 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 knew. He was a manufacturer. He knew what he was doing. And uh, uh, some more of us me through the years with some embarrassing pictures. They tend to dress me up as things, and I tend to let them dress me up. I don't know why. And then, uh, oh, I wish I had that. You know, next time I'm going to get the whole range of kiss pictures because after they made me up for the mag filming the shooting the magazine cover, that was. Uh, Night, uh, that was um, a Saturday afternoon, but I had to get downtown. So I left the makeup on for about the next seven, eight hours, drove in my uh, convertible downtown, went to the gas, uh, picked up my motorcycle, went to the gas station, went to the harbor, and went to the club, all that, all dressed up like that. Uh, ooh, I'm not going to talk about the other one where I did that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, actually, another time they dressed me up as and made me up in green as Grandpa in um, in the Monsters, and we were at the uh, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Well, my friend Joe Kamenkow, who was our head of design earlier, and uh, my associate, I'm going to call him my partner, uh, he had tickets to the hockey game, ice hockey, and his tickets, his seats. We're right on the ice next to the team. Team, seat, seat. And I'm all made up like a, like a grandpa. And then you look up on the Tinnatron, the big TV, and there is the actual grandpa and me, because the, the announcers picked me up and showed me that. Any event, these buildings are interesting. Um, the, this, is, uh, this is where we were on uh, Janus Avenue in, uh, in, in, in uh, Melrose. Melrose, thank you, Melrose Park. That's about 40,000 square foot. That's our, not our first building there. We started in about 25,000 square foot. We actually started in my basement in 1986. Uh, my father had passed away in, 80, in 84, so he never got to see this company. But uh, we started in my basement. It was Shelly Sachs and me, and uh, then putting together a business plan. Joe Kamenko joined us. We moved into some temporary office, two rooms, and two rooms in a 300 and some thousand square foot building that they tore down after we got, after we left. I don't think that was the reason. Um, and then we moved into 25,000 square foot in Melrose Park, then a 40,000 square foot building. This, this is 4242 West Fillmore. That's the second Williams building. That's where they were. Uh, the first building was on Huron Street. When Sam, I'm out of order, but when Sam bought in, they were on Huron Street. It was a six-story manufacturing building. The reason it was six stories, the first story was Jack's holding up the second story. The third story was Jack's holding up the fourth floor. And the fifth floor was Jacks holding up the sixth floor. So then they moved to 4242 West Fillmore. The area is a blighted area now. Uh, it's a horrible area now. It wasn't horrible, it wasn't great in those days. I started at age 16 with my first paid job uh, that was working in the stock room. If you're in manufacturing, material control is, you know, where you either make your money or lose your money. Um, it's where, you know, if you don't have enough parts, you waste labor. If you have too many parts, you throw them out when you're done. 
MRP, material requirements and planning, material control is the most is very important. The most important thing the design group does for manufacturing is they create the bill of material, the parts list that drives everything. And if they create the bill of material and they leave off the flippers, Eddie Spears in our purchasing department will knows, hey, there's no flippers. But if they leave off some ball guide, then you're gonna buy $3 million of parts and not be able to build any games because you don't have that part. Um, this is our building, it's first building of Melrose Park, 106,000 square feet, about 10,000 square meter. That is uh, the Lunt building. It's no longer there. It, was, it, it belonged to a big real estate company called ProLogic. And they own a lot of the property there. They sold the building to the neighbor just to our west, which was a multi-story building. It was multi-story because it was a data center for processing you know, all kinds of data. It big air conditioners on the roof. I think it had about six basements. I don't know that, but it seemed to go forever. Down our road, they had put in a fiber optic cable. So we were the fiber optic highway. So ProLogic sold our building to the land of the neighbor. And then the neighbor said, okay, we don't want to renew your lease, but we will pay you to go away. So they paid us to get out and we moved into our new building, which we'll look a little bit at later. Uh, this was the old, again, 4242 West Fillmore. And you can see, these are just interesting pictures of manufacturing back in the day. This room, I haven't looked at this picture. This is a plating department. All metal parts are plated. We don't do that ourselves now, we send that out. We're more, you know, heavy duty assembly. The pinball factories back in the day were true, true, full, fully integrated manufacturing uh, with punch presses and metal bending and everything. This was plating department. My, when I was 17, I was the personnel director, temporary for the summer, and one of the guys didn't make it in there, and so they sent me in, sent him in to see me. And uh, sitting down, and he comes in, sits down, and he's looking at me. I'm looking at him, and I said, "They didn't tell you anything, did they?" They were firing him. He wasn't you know, laying him off. And as this 17-year-old kid was going to have to do it because they didn't tell anybody. So that's a, it was trauma for me. It was bigger trauma for him. Uh, but this was the old factory. You can see the people lined up in the way we used to make things. See what we got next. So this is more pictures of us making things. I guess I've got it here for a reason. This is a 2020 Jan. It's a 40,000 square foot building. Uh, this is Lunt as we continue to grow cable department and, and let me back up for a minute uh, a few of you saw the new building and took the tour there were a thousand people he, he taking that tour probably a few over that um, we we had we had a thousand tokens that we gave people uh, and i think we had three left i got one so that's four but some people didn't get them so there were well, well over a thousand people came through to see that building. And I'm very happy because we're all very proud of it. it. We'll talk more about the fact that it is the only truly manufacturing building that I've ever seen in the game business. And I don't mean just pinball, I mean the game business. This thing is fantastic. We'll talk about that a little more. I'll digress around. That was a lot. There's a reason I have this picture in here. This is an old, it's not, it's a painting of an old Williams game called Oh Boy. <coughs> you can tell that it's old 50s game. I'd have to look it up, maybe 60s, I think 50s. And the reason I have it here, back up, the reason I have it here, the artist who painted this, this, this sold at Suffolk Bees for something over $100,000 about 10 years ago. He was a very good artist, very well known. Somebody had his name last time I did this and I forgot. I always forget to write it down. Charles, whatever. Say it again. 
Charles, but I... Louder, you got your own microphone. Charles, I'll look up his last name. Charles. I'm gonna look it up, okay, he's gonna look it up. Okay, so he was doing color studies, and I just found this interesting, because in his color studies, he painted the reflection of the back glass on the playfield glass. Okay. It's nothing new. This uh, this is 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 something that existed in pinball for a long, long time. Okay, one more. Uh, when we started the first Stern, uh, I had taken over the assets of Chicago Coin. They had a calendar. I like always like this. Their calendar was this artwork, so I took it for a back class and made the first Stern pinball for electronics with it. You got it. Charles Bell. Bell? B-E-L-L? Yeah, yeah. B-E-L-L. -L. B -E Charles. Charles Bell. He's, you know, a well-known artist. Well-known enough that Jonathan found his name. I didn't. Okay, <laughs> next one we'll talk about. Gamatron. The reason I have this here. Gamatron. Do I got the, what's the next one? Do what I think it is? Yeah. Gamatron was a narrow-body version of Flight 2000. One of my favorite old Harry Williams games. And, I, and uh, the reason I show you this is twofold. One is Steve Kirk, the game designer, and, and myself, we decided to make a conversion kit for Bally Games. Unfortunately, when we came out with it, it was about the same time as Steve Ritchie's uh, High Speed. Why would you convert an old Bally game when you could trade it in and buy a new high speed in those days? Well, why would you ever convert a game? That was one of the flaws of Pinball 2K. They thought people would convert games. No, you just trade it in just like today. Games have, va games have value. But the game, instead of a ball walker, we use ejects. We had one pop bumper instead of three, narrow body. It was a far superior game playing than Flight 2000. Wide bodies, wide bodies, I was telling this young man, wide bodies, the problem with wide bodies, Harry taught me, is the ball slows up going from left to right too much. So you really don't get the action that you want. You have to put in more parts, like the old ball walker, so it costs you too much. Remember, this is a business. We got to make money so we can make the next game. And so, um, narrow bodies. You know, there was one. Um, oh God, Neil Falconer, game designer, uh, software designer, from for Bally and then Data East and later IGT slot machines. Whenever companies started coming out with wide bodies, it showed panic, and so he would put out his resume because uh, he knew the business was going to suffer. And uh, he was right. We did it when we shouldn't. So in any event, this was the Gamatron one. What, what, what do I have next? Where are we going? I was, took that one out, so let's skip that one for now. Skip that one. All right, now, we're going to talk about pinball today. You saw, you saw uh, some of the other factories. You saw the, uh, the um, uh, Lunt factory. This is the factory that we're in now, and those of you who toured saw it, and this is in at night, and I couldn't be more proud of what our people have done here. This building, we share it. We don't have all of it yet, yet. We have 165,000 square feet of this building, um, call that 150 or so square meters. We have another building nearby with 50,000 square feet, uh, where we do our woodworking and we do some innovation, our innovation center. Um, this building, what we've done here, the mayor wanted us to do this, and this is it at night, uh, and it's the anchor piece of a, of a road in the industrial park, um, and it is the future. It is bringing our manufacturing into the uh, 21st century, just as we're bringing the games in the 21st century. Um, we go back, go back, go not so quick. This is the silver ball. You know, 
Go back to, to go back a couple. Go back. Keep going. Go, go, go. Don't ignore those. Keep going. Go a little further. A little further. A little further. Where's the sign here? Uh, nope. We went too. No, nope, here. Back, back. One more. <laughs> keep going. Four. More. 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 No. No. You keep going the wrong way. Go to the fin Go to the beginning. Towards the beginning. Towards the beginning. Not that far. <laughs> one, next one. Next one. One more. One more. One more. Uh, one more. No. Back one. Back one. There. There. That sign, which is from Prologis, who, by the way, is our landlord in the new building. Uh, people used to come and get their picture taken in front of that junky sign. So we decided that people are going to come by. Well, yes, we have. Now we go to the new building. We have uh, great murals, you know, lighting up at night about pinball. Um, we also happen to have hidden in here the elk of Elk Grove Village because we're in Elk Grove. Um, but the ball is so people, instead of in front of a junky sign, can take their picture in front of that ball. It's seven foot in diameter, uh, weighs 800 pounds, is held in the ground by 16 inch pylon things down in the ground, um, polished stainless steel. One of the things that says, you see a reflection at night often. I have a picture on my phone, I should show you all, but it's not up here. On a cloudy day, it is so freaky. It's beautiful to see it. All different kind of weather. Great stuff on it, absolutely great. All right, let's go to another one. Let's see, do I have more pictures? Uh, what we do, you all probably know, but I will say again is, we make three cornerstone games a year, three main games, Good, Better, Best, uh, Pro Premium LE, in the last year, Jaws, Wick, uh, now, X-Men, by the way, I am taking an X-Men premium to Vail, Colorado, which is where I live. I love that game, have to have it. We do some specials. So here was our uh, Godzilla in the black and white, and this is stunning. The remastered Metallica, which you will see shortly, the, uh, the X-Men you can play here. Um, we do great machines, great design work. You know, what I want to get, give me the next slide, let me see where I'm going. Okay, we have modern manufacturing, uh, sculpts and all that, but let's talk about the factory. And somebody's having a tour. Um, look how short they are compared to the high ceiling. This building, fully air conditioned, well lit, clean. My father used to say, and some of you who were in the you're going to pardon my language here. My father used to say, if you give people a shitty place to work, they'll do shitty work. We have a really good place to work, both for our engineering, design, and accounting, everybody, product development, and the factory. And so we have typically about 450 people, maybe 500. We have a lot of consultants doing uh, software, especially on... Uh, Insider Connected, which we'll talk about because that's really the future. Um, and so, um, this thing is, is absolutely stunning. We're going to start arranging, uh, we're working on regular tours where you can sign up and take a tour, but we certainly at Pinball Expo, Expo are thrilled to have people tour. Uh, so, our, we, we have, th this is the only factory ever in the game business that is, you eat off the floor, it's clean, it's, you know, it, it's efficient, it's, it's a modern factory. We have joined the 21st century with our factory. What would I show next? Ah, Insider Connected, which by the way, you, you can, we, have, we have the app, the new, um, um, uh, the new um, the user interface will be, you'll have a new inter user interface next week to even improve it. Um, but before I talk about that, let's talk about all the things that we've done to grow pinball and to grow the pinball community. You know, when I say we have good, better, best, three, three versions, we have, I used to get, somebody used to belittle me for saying that we have three legs to our farmer's stool, like you milk a cow. We have 
game operators in the commercial business, which is really, we have game players in, in locations. In, uh, in, in, uh, in our country, bar arcades, we're starting to see some here in, in bars, bowling alleys. Right now, we have a lot of games going into, and we are doing this and supporting it uh, and introducing it, a lot of games going into bar, into uh, brew pubs. Um, and uh, typically the brew pubs, a small industrial area, not a bar, but uh, you know, the brewing beer is very big in America. And uh, typically, well, we have one guy who comes from that industry, uh, and uh, we hired him just to help find it. Plus, that our guys like, like to go to different cities and drink beer, and that's how this all started. So we've got about 600 breweries that have put in pinball machines with operators operating them, four or more each. Very good split for the operator, good business, and good for the location. So we're doing things to grow pinball. We have pinball, uh, we have launch parties that never existed years ago. We have the uh, Stern Army with a, a thousand army members, a little over a thousand army members now, that are introducing pinball at various locations, events in those locations. All this to drive, to build the community, drive the interest. Because again, three legs of that school. Stool, game operators, general homeowners who just want something different, you know, if at home, especially in, the, in COVID. I'm watching here, because I want to leave time for questions. We have plenty. Don't know many answers, but we got plenty of time. Uh, <laughs> Operators, which really means 20-somethings, 30-somethings playing games and location. Uh, just general homeowners who want a flex for the home. There's a difference in those homeowners today, by the way. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, when somebody bought a game for the home, he was buying it. It was a what they call a flex, something cool to have. His kids played games. Today, that 45-year-old, give or take, who's buying a game for the home for the first time, he's probably a gamer. He probably played console games, arcade games, but he probably played console games, everything else. He's much more sophisticated of a gamer, so the games are more sophisticated. It's no longer three rollover legs at the top, A, B, C, light them, light red special, get an extra ball. There's different game rules, there's different ways to play the game, there's modes, there's so much in it. And that, that gamer who bought a game for the home, in 40% of the cases, believe this, is gonna buy a second game. He's, becoming, he's going to become an enthusiast. He may buy a third, a fourth, in some of your cases, 10, 50, 100 games. Okay, got to have a lot of space, but some of you. In fact, sometimes you run out of space. And this is a cycle we see. And we, we did a market study with a big marketing company. And when you run out of space, some of you have taken games, and certainly in, in my country, and gone to a bowling alley and said, you don't have pinball. Can I put my pinball in here? And you become an operator so that more young people can play the game, can buy the game when they're 45, buy many more games, become operators. And in fact, in America, the head of the AMOA, the Amusement and Music Operators of America, used to be the MOA when I was a kid. The Music Operators of America, they operate jukeboxes, but they also operate a lot of amusements now. The president of that association started with one time machine, stern time machine, cleaned it up, restored it, went to a bowling alley, no, a, yeah, bowling alley, it is a bowling alley, it was there recently, talked him into taking his machine. Now, all of those machines in that, all, whether they're pinball or something else, are, are uh, Bob's machines, Paradise Pinball. All of the, his, he has uh, some, uh, family in, uh, entertainment in some uh, uh, bar arcades. He's a very large operator, 1,000 plus machines, more. He's the head of the, uh, the association of operators, all because he refurbished one machine. So that's part of this cycle that's important to, to us and to build the community and to build pinball and build it to its future. What else do we do? We talked about a new and better factory. We hired Lloyd here. You know, I go back to uh, only a few of you were at 
Pinball Expo. And uh, I'm going to speak like uh, Trump was running for president because he weaves, he says he weaves the speech. He goes all over the place. Well, I'm going to go all over the place a little too. So um, we hired Lloyd to join us in order to do some of the things that we do in America. And what was really interesting to, to uh, Seth and myself, Seth's our president, uh, is that uh, at Pinball Expo, so many Europeans were there this year, more than I, I think in the past. I'm going to get statistics, but it really seemed, especially during our tour, there were there were very many, very many uh, 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 people from Europe. Now, this show is really good, so maybe you don't have to come there anymore. But the the, the, the neat thing about the show in Chicago area is that past and current designers, all those kind of people are at that show and you meet a lot of different people. What else are we doing to grow pinball? Huh? Yeah, yeah, we grow the community in the army. As I said, a thousand, a thousand army members uh, organizing events at least once a month in, in, a, in a commercial location so that we can grow it. Um, do I have another slide? What do I got? Uh, okay, we'll get back. We'll get back to how you can help. Let's sit there. Another thing that we did to grow pinball is I ran a pinball company that we were scrappy. We're still scrappy, but we were scrappy. We fought. We did things not always in the most uh, elegant way in order to get things done. But the business has grown. So we hire Seth Davis, and he's, he's CFO. Nick, Nick, uh, Nick comes from the, uh, the um, uh, Jim Beam, the liquor industry, which is somewhat related to us. Our games are in bars. Uh, Seth is a about 47 year old. He's been with us uh, for three years. Uh, he came in as president, but I remained as chairman and CEO. Uh, now I'm chairman, he's the CEO. And he, this is because we're gonna grow this business. And we're gonna grow, make better games for you, and grow, make better games in this factory. We have better systems. He, his undergraduate degree is in accounting, his, and in information technology. Then he spent 10 years, a decade, after university with General Electric, GE, which was a, the, the, the pinnacle of companies to train with, trained in finance and manufacturing. He went back to Wharton Business School, one of the, the University of Pennsylvania, great business school, uh, classy business school, fine business school, and got his Master of Business Administration. Then he spent a decade plus at Walt Disney, at Disney. Okay, he involved with streaming and with games. He is an actual gamer, he plays games, he knows the games, he knows the video games. One of the things that we do comes from the video game business. You know, we are constantly updating code. Sometimes it's to complete things, sometimes it's to change things, sometimes it's to make something new. In the video game business, they're always dropping new code to reinvigorate the game, to give it more life. We're not just fixing things. We're not just bringing out code because we're not done. We're bringing out code, and, and you'll see sometimes we'll bring out mass of codes all at one time. A lot of codes, all, all together. That's part of how to change this business. And because of Insider Connected, it downloads automatically. We'll come back to Insider Connected. Uh, a little bit. Um, let's um, go my last page, second to the last page. This one. What's our vision? I want to point out a couple words. To, com to create compelling entertainment that inspires a lifelong love of games, sparks passion, forges friendships, and connects people everywhere through fun, innovative, technologically advanced, Pinball games and experience. Okay, a couple things to point out here. We are going to connect pinball, uh, people, 
the community. We want to build the community. We're going to do it with technology. And we are going to create games. Now we talked about, I talked about, you didn't, I talked about high-tech manufacturing, better manufacturing, so forth. We're not, we make our own games. We make them in America, I'm China or anything like that, but not principally, I'm not gonna say we're principally or most important game manufacturers. We're most important creators of compelling entertainment, game designers. We design games and we have the best designers in the industry that the industry's ever had. And the most complete, big design teams, I must say, uh, was with the software and the kind of games that we're talking about for players today that are grew up playing games or more in the games. And we do it with technology, with high technology. You know, we, we changed from a matrix system years ago to a bus system. Some of the people said to me, why are you doing that? I'm a lawyer. I don't understand it at all. But I knew that to go to advance, it's what we had to do. You know, your automobile used to have a matrix system, like the old Williams systems and what have you. And you had a cable the size of my wrist in that automobile. Now you've got a few wires going to smart boards that operate the car. The same is true in pinball. And doing that, that gave us the possibility to do what I think is the most important thing. Let's go back to one of the pages that talks about connectivity. Oh good, connectivity. Why is this important? It's important because this is the future of any product. Any product today to have any future has to have connectivity. You've got to have it. You've got to, you start your car with your phone today. Let it warm up in the winter. You, I have a new washer dryer. It's calling me to tell me when the clothes should be taken out. I really don't care to have a conversation with my washer dryer but it wants to talk to me. You don't watch network TV, you stream TV. A pinball machine without connectivity is like a Sony Betamax. It's old news. The old Sony tape players that didn't make a VHS and then said, nobody uses any of that. Everything is streamed today. Everything's in the cloud. And you have to be in the cloud. Our games can be played without being connected. But you can play more with some of the rules and effects and things that come out of the cloud. Insider Connected is based similar to Xbox Live. We only have you know, hundreds of thousands of players so far. We started six years ago. We introduced it on Godzilla three plus years ago. We've got millions of dollars invested and continue to invest and continue to come up with new achievements. We, uh, we will continue to add to it. We'll continue to ask you what you want. Where's that slide? Okay, I'll find that one. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we uh, feedback a title survey we just did only because we have Insider Connected can we do that. We, uh, and again, we see, we see the, you know, the, the play go up, we see people's earnings, so they'll put more games out, go up. We saw when we did uh, March Madness, we saw a big spike. We, we know what days people are playing, that's going to surprise you, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, that, that. Um, there's, huh? No? Not Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Huh? No. No, we can speak about Costco. Of course we can. What we've done in America with Costco, a major retailer, we introduced a less expensive game, not coin op, not quite, uh, you know, it's, it's a little smaller. The purpose of it is to sell games and make money because that's what we do. The purpose of it is to introduce a whole new group of people to pinball. Seven million people 
7 million a day, I think it is. Walk by those games, that's, that's phenomenal. Walk by those games and see pinball. There's still people who say, oh, you still make pinball? Some, there's still, used to be people when I said I, I'm in the pinball business said, oh, you work for Valley? Now they know Stern. Most of them know. And we've done, uh, we, uh, uh, with a company called Brand Trust, we did a, a uh, survey. I'll tell you the other thing we learned with Brand Trust. This is the point that I wanted to get to. You want to help other people. There's Costco, more people. But we want to help more people. One of the biggest problems of somebody deciding to buy a pinball machine, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna use it with the wrong word, I'm gonna call it fear. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know who to go to to buy a pinball machine. They see one in your, your house and say, oh, that's cool. They may not ask you where to buy it. I've known some people who have pinball at home and who've just introduced their friends, and then their friends have pinball. They don't know how to do it. They don't know if it's smart. They don't want to buy something expensive and turn out to be stupid. They don't want to buy it and have trouble with it or not know where to get it fixed. They need what's called a Sherpa, a leader, a guide to help them buy people. And you can do that. You can help whether it's my game or somebody else's. I prefer it's mine. You can help them find and guide them through buying a pinball. Any of your friends who come home, come to your home and play pinball, or you play in a bar or wherever you play pinball, and they say this is fun, you can have this. You can have this at home just like I do. Oh, but that's sort of scary. Walk them through, help them. Hold your friend's hand, help them do it. Because with that, with that, Inside of Connected, with better games, better factory, guy like Seth, Seth who's smarter than I am, has better questions than I do, him leading us into the future better than I can. All of that is going to grow pinball, and with telling us what you want, and we'll ask you other things, with our introducing all the things we're doing, but in you're introducing more people and helping them, guiding them, you can help grow pinball and you can help grow the community. And that's what we're all trying to do. <coughs> With that, have I left anything out? I don't think so, and if I did, it doesn't matter. Huh? Yeah, just Q&A. My boss here says Q&A. <laughs> now we're getting a little short of time anyways. Anybody got a question for me that I may or may not answer? What's your question? Uh, yes, you keep talking. Uh, yes, Gary, you keep talking about connectivity, but how long do you think Inside Connected will last? I mean, eventually... No, it... no, 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 you let me answer your question. Well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> well, eventually, uh, once Inside Connected uh, get, uh, has its online service terminated, the functionality uh, will become completely impossible for, say, Venom. Do you no. have a second plan? No, no, it won't. It, it, it won't become impossible, everybody. We, the games will, we're not turning it off. It's staying on, and the cloud is there. The other, it's gonna become as impossible as streaming is, and streaming's not going away. It's all here, don't worry about that. That's not possible. It will continue, and we will continue to support it. That's most important, because we want our games to have resale value, so they have value for you. All right, anybody else got a question? Raise your hand and I have a mic for you then. That was easy. Not everybody at the same time. <coughs> well, thank you, Gary Stern. Thank you all very much. Gary will be back tomorrow in case you want to hear it again. Oh, Okay. I just um, want to say something before. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Marcel and Jonathan because without people like them, we don't have events like we have here. So we need to continue to support that kind of people who loves our passion of pinballs.